Let me see here. How does this work? Let's flip it upside down. That was a bad idea. Welcome to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pavel Shotcross, and in today's video, as you can see, we have possibly the most famous toy piano that has ever lived, and that is the Schoenhut. Now, these little instruments are incredibly well known. Almost everyone recognizes the sound that they make and knows what they look like, and they've been around since 1872, as it says right here on the fallboard, I guess. That's what you'd call it on a real piano. Um, and so there's a reason that these little tiny toy pianos have existed under this same name since 1872, and that's because they're actually very popular and many people enjoy them. Personally, I don't really like the sound of them, but a lot of people do. And I've also got a lot of requests to review a Schoenhut, mostly as a joke, I think, but I'm gonna do it anyways. So to buy one of these new, of course you can buy them online, and this particular model I believe is around $60, and they have bigger, taller, fancier versions that can go nearly up to $200, which I think is a little bit expensive, but this particular model actually I purchased online used from eBay from halfway across the United States for only about $35. And I wanted to give a, th a quick thank you to my patrons over on my Patreon page who have donated some money as you do on Patreon, and their small donations have helped me to have some fun with instruments like this, and the link for that will be in the description. So if you want to donate as well and help me make more fun videos like this, feel free to do that if you want to. So the Schoenhut, what is it? I mean, I feel like most of us already here know what these sound like and know what they are, but as you can see, it is a toy piano. This particular model only has one octave and then four extra white keys. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, you've got five extra notes. So you've got one octave and then five additional notes, which is a pitifully small range. And so as a musical instrument for any sort of context other than a child, it is going to be nearly useless. They do have models that have a wider range, I think up to three octaves, maybe even four. Um, so those would be more useful if you're looking for that toy piano sound um, for any particular reason. But for a child, this I think would be more than enough. Now by child, that is a wide age range. Age range. But what the, the children, the demographic of people that I think would find this most enjoyable would be anywhere between the ages of one to five. Anything older than that, if a kid wanted to learn how to play the piano, they're not going to do it on this, although you could teach them what C and D and E look like. So you can do that. You can teach them the very basic fundamentals. But as far as playing it and learning how a piano is supposed to sound and what pitches sound like, although this is technically in key, the that the, the harmonics of each note are so incredibly messy that it's very difficult to identify notes and make it actually sound good. So anything older than five or six, I think, would be the upper limit to how useful this would be. But for a toddler, for a young child, I mean, look at it. It's bright red. It's a tiny piano. It's actually very cute, and I think it, it looks really, really nice. Um, so, so that's who this is made for. And I think especially a kid who has already been exposed to music, someone in the family already plays, they go to some sort of festivals often. When I was little, about eight, I used to go to the Sacramento Ragtime and Jazz uh, Societies and festivals and things uh, that were in Sacramento, California, and that was a lot of fun. Um, so, you know, if you do things like that with your family and you bring the kid along, they probably will have some sort of an interest in music, and if they're two or three or four, and you bring them to these festivals, they might want to play the piano, and this might be a good way to get them started off with, because if they like this, and they, they start to, you know, enjoy playing this, then you might want to get them something a little nicer and actually teach them how to play the instrument. So what I'm going to do is just play a few little notes on here. Like I said, the range is only an octave and five additional notes, so the, I, I literally cannot play any piece of music ever. No Bach, no nothing, even some simple melodic melodies I run out of room on that's just one note at a time. So I'm just gonna noodle around here and just play a few different notes on here and uh, we're gonna have a little bit of fun with it and hope you guys enjoy hearing the sound. I'm sure you'll recognize it as soon as you hear it. These are very, very well known.
So that is the sound of the show on that, and I'm sure you all recognize it. Now, I said in the early, in the beginning of the video that I don't like the sound of this instrument, and that is honestly rather true. I don't find the sound of this to be particularly pleasing to listen to. But there's something about it that seems to be very charming to both children and also animals. I've seen a few videos of people's pets, dogs, and cats putting their front paws on this and howling or just getting attention by smashing the keys of these instruments. One of my subscribers actually posted a video in the comments of one of my videos, maybe she'll do it again, of her dogs playing one of these, not this exact model, but the same brand, and playing it and howling and have a good time, and it was very cute. I've also seen a video of a cat who learned that if he put his paws on the piano and made noise, he would get treats, so now he just does that at all hours of the morning, which is hilarious. So there's something about the sound that young children and animals really enjoy hearing, apparently. Um, so that's why these have been around since 1872, because people have enjoyed them. Um, and there's a few things about it that I actually do like, and strangely enough, one of them is actually the keys. Compared to the kawaii toy piano that I reviewed a while back that had very, very small keys, the size of keys on this are actually very playable. They do get heavier in towards the back, and they don't repeat or do trills very well. Not very well at all, but when you're just playing normal stuff that's a little simpler, they work just fine. So if this had the sound and the range of the kawaii piano, but with these keys, with maybe a little performance boost and trills and quick movements, you'd have a genuinely good instrument. You really would. Um, like you'd actually have a tiny baby Celesta at that point. It would be awesome. Um, but as this stands, it is a little bit useless as an instrument. The other thing I like about it, though, is just the size and the color. The bright red color is awesome, and once again, Children love bright colors, and that's another reason these are popular. Back in the, or the 1870s, 1880s, they used to have ornate designs and stuff. Um, and I think I saw a picture of one online that was only white keys and then had the black keys like painted onto the white keys so you'd know what the notes were, which is really funny. So even in the 1800s, these were still relatively useless instruments. You couldn't play chromatically on that. But they're ch kids' toys, so, you know, they don't need to be. Now, as you may notice, there's these giant bolts on the side. You've got three here, there's three on this side, and there's also two Phillips head screws up here. And obviously those are used to take the instrument apart. I don't think there's any screws anywhere else on the instrument. So, should I take it apart so we can see what it looks like on the inside and see how it makes this, this lovely noise? I think so. But I will need an Allen wrench. There just happens to be one right here, and I also need a screwdriver, and there also happens to be one over here. So let's take this thing apart and uh, see how it goes. So we've got these over here, and these, by the way, were loose enough that I could literally just hand loosen them, and they came that way when I bought it used. So perhaps someone's already taken it apart, perhaps it's just loosened up with time, something. So I'm going to take these out. They're very sh relatively short. This one's like coming out at a funny angle. That's weird. That's what they look like. Bolts. And let's take this one out too. So I think I will fast forward this video, and I will see you when this is all over with, unless something exciting happens in the meantime. So this here is the bare minimum of what makes up the Schoenhut piano. This apparently is able to lift out to some extent, apparently, yeah. So this is your keyboard, and then the noise is produced by these metal tines. And that's all you have. So for produce sound, the Schoenhut little toy piano has a very simple mechanism. There's no strings, there's no metal tubes like we had on the Kawai. All we have is just this large metal bar that has these smaller bars protruding from it. So it's very primitive, it's very rough, it's very, very, like, you know, dusty and gross. But this is what creates the sound. Now, by themselves, they make almost no sound at all. If you pluck them, they do next to nothing. So they have to be struck with something percussive in order to actually make sound. Since the keys aren't in, I'll just use this bolt that was used to hold it together. And obviously you can hear that that is creating the sound. So it has to be something hard colliding with that bar. Now this lowest one down here was actually bent 
and was touching the back plate and I was noticing that it buzzed so I adjusted it. Um, there is no real adjustment, you just simply bend it to where you need it to be. Um, that's how primitive this is, but regardless I adjusted that lower bar um, so that it hopefully won't buzz anymore against the back plate. So this is what creates the sound and then the keys will slit into here. So it's kind of upside down uh, in relation to the camera, but I just turned it that way so you guys could get a good look of how that works. So it's possibly the simplest keyboard instrument in existence, maybe? So I have completely gutted the instrument at this point and taken every single component out, pretty much, with the, with the exception of the sound producing unit. So behind here, you can see the sound producing unit. We already took a look at that. And then this is how it normally sits and the keys would go here. So this is the little box that holds the keys in. And although this is about as far removed from a real acoustic piano as you can possibly get, there's actually two things that it still has in common with a real piano. And one of those is in a sense, the way the keys work, just like a real piano, they have a pivot point and you will set them in here like so, and then they will pivot. And that's the basics of a piano's action. Obviously it's different. It's much, much, much simplified and much more primitive, but that's kind of how an actual piano works. If you were to take a key out, you would put it back in with this exact same motion. Um, and so the way the action, if you want to call it that works, you only have one, well, two moving parts, the key and that lever. So if you push the key quietly, you can see that it doesn't actually do very much. But you have to push it with a bit of velocity, and then that little um, hammer will get launched into motion by this felt, and swing forward and strike the key. Very primitive, very simple, but hey, it works. It does the job. And the other thing that is, this has in common with a real acoustic piano is that I found things inside of it. So this is a, a red Trader Joe's sticker with a pumpkin on it, so it probably was owned by a little kid, and then somehow this ended up inside of the key bed. Um, so that's something else that is commonly found in real acoustic pianos is just random things that have fallen into them over the years. As you can see by the amount of dust that's in here, it's definitely not a new instrument and I did buy it used. Um, and so now I'm just going to put all these keys back in so we can see how it operates with all of the pieces missing. Now taking this key bed out is a bit of a process because these, putting these in, you have to put them in manually like this. You can slide the entire key bed out in one nice movement, but to put them back in, you either need two people to do it, one to hold the keys up, one to put the fallboard of the uh, key bed in, or just do it the slow manual way. Another thing that this has in common with a real acoustic piano is that the keys are all labeled. On a real acoustic piano, because there's typically 88 keys, sometimes more, sometimes less, um, the keys are all labeled A, B, C, D, and usually with numbers, actually, with real acoustic pianos. They're usually numbered one or zero. One will be in the very bottom, and then 88 will be at the very top. This has a similar thing. The white keys are all labeled. The black keys aren't. I guess that's because they're probably all interchangeable with this particular instrument. Um, but the, the white keys are all labeled. You've got C, you've got D, you've got E, you've You've got C, C, you've got C again. Isn't that strange? Because this is actually an F, and it'll look like an F once I put the rest of these keys in. You'll see that this is actually a group of three black keys, not two. Um, but this is actually an F, but it's labeled as a C, which is very strange. I do not know why. Um, they also, all the keys also say Ma on them up here as well, M-A. I don't, I don't know why, but they do. So it says Ma, and then also the names of the white keys with two of them being wrong. Yes, two of them are wrong. I'll show you the other one that's wrong here at the end. Um, it's also an F for some reason. Um, so once I put all these keys in here, we will see how it looks, and I'll play it a little bit more, and you'll get to watch this it's fascinatingly simple mechanism in action. So here we are coming down to the last key, uh, and this last key is again an F, but it's labeled as an X, I guess to signify it's the last key in the instrument. Um, but it's very strange that both the only two Fs on the instrument are not labeled Fs. So let's play a little bit more and you'll get to see how this action works. It's actually kind of fun to watch. And yes, that's just there. There's a hole here. Um, I shouldn't pull that out. Uh, so that's how that works. Personally, I think it's way more fun to play with all of this exposed. Schoenhut, make one of these that's clear. Make one of these that has a clear front compartment, maybe even one that has some very rudimentary LEDs in the top so it illuminates it from above. Oh, that would be cool. I think kids would go nuts for that. Especially, I guess this would get expensive, but if it was RGB, red, green, blue, color changing LEDs, 
Oh, I think they might. Kids might absolutely love that. So there's an idea. You're welcome to use that if you haven't already. I have never seen one like that. Um, so there you go. That is the internal workings of the Shone Hut. Possibly the simplest keyboard instrument in existence, but it does work. And that's what it does. So now what I'm going to do is put it all back together. A um, couple interesting things. The bottom plate that slides in underneath here just has holes in it. Um, and so that's what that does. And I'm going to put this all back together. The other components you've already seen. We've got the side panels here. The fallboard, which I think I should probably put in now. Um, actually, I can't because there's no place for it to go. It just kind of sits there. So uh, I put that to the side. We've got the side panels. This is the top panel, which I think definitely should go on first. Um, although I... Can I put that on first? I don't think I can either. I think this might have to be something I have to assemble off camera because I will have to get very awkward with it. All right. Let's do that off camera. It actually wasn't quite as awkward as I had thought. All I did was I just turned it on its side and now I can easily screw in the side panels here. So if you ever take one of these apart for fun or whatever reason, just put it on its side and that's that's totally the way you should actually do this. When I took it apart, I figured that the bottom would, I don't know why I thought that because I could see it was higher, um, but I figured that the bottom would just be able to, to sit there and the sides would just fall away. But that's not what happened. Um, let me grab my Allen key. So the way to take this apart is definitely its side and not in an upright position. There we go. And now I can either perhaps put this on now. That's right. I cannot put that on just yet. That will be the last thing. So I think when you're taking one of these apart, the process should be top panel comes off first. And then when you're putting it back together, the top panel will go on last. So now let's line this up. That's already lined up. And we'll put these three in. I have to say, the build quality of this is actually weirdly good. Like, yeah, the sound mechanism is, is primitive and the keys aren't amazing. But the way it goes together almost, almost feels like a professional thing. These have a nice feel to them. They go in smoothly. They tighten up nicely. The The way it's assembled is logical and it makes sense. Um, it's really, really simple, but it's also very well done, in my opinion. So here's this. It's all working. Beautiful music there. Now what I'm going to do is I think now is the time to put this on. Yeah, there's slots for it. Ah, that makes sense. Then, that. There we go. And then this bottom panel, I think, just slides in. Ah, uh, did I mess myself up? I might have to put the bottom panel. I might have to take it apart again and put the bottom panel in. Let me see here. How does this work? Let's flip it upside down. That was a bad idea. What did you think was going to hold it in? I don't know. <laughs> So I actually had to reassemble it a little bit because I realized that the bottom panel can't be put on when both of the side panels are on. So I had to retake one of the side panels off. And there was also a mishap in which I had to replace all of the keys. And in doing so, um, I realized why F is labeled as C. And it's because F is the same shape as C, so the C key is literally interchangeable with F. So someone at the factory just put in a second C. And I also realized that the only, there is no B. It is not labeled B. This is B, but it's labeled as an E, and I didn't notice that because B is almost the same shape as E. Um, so, And the E is the exact same shape as B, so that's totally interchangeable as well. So unlike a real piano, you cannot put the keys in. In a real piano, you can't put the keys in out of order. In this, it really doesn't matter, which is kind of interesting, and it made assembling it both easy and also very weird and confusing, because I'm used to real pianos where every key has its own specific spot, and that is the only place that it can go. Now this time, I will remember to put the screws into the top, and one of them fell on the floor, so let me put these in, and uh, I will get back to you when that is done. This should be pretty uneventful here. So that is the Show and Hut piano, all fully assembled. In all of its glory. 
So that has been a comprehensive deep dive into the Shown Hut piano, or at least as comprehensive and deep as a video on a tiny toy piano can possibly be. There's not a lot to talk about here. It's a very simple instrument. And as I said earlier in today's video, it is excellent for a very young child. I think if I were two, I think I probably would have loved to have one of these. Because when I was two, I loved to make noise. Anything that made noise was an immediate favorite of mine. And although this isn't super musical and pretty, it's great at making noise, so I think even that would be really, really great for kids. And although brand new, these are, in my opinion, a little bit pricey, they do have a good build quality, and I don't think they'd get broken very easily at all unless they fell down the stairs or got hit by a truck. So they last a very long time, and on top of that, like I said, this one was $35 including shipping, so you can buy these used for very, very cheap. So if you're looking for a gift for a young child, this would be an excellent option for you. If you're a professional musician, I have heard of professional musicians using these in music. Like I've said, personally not my taste, but it can be done, and it can be done quite well. So. You can use one of these as an adult, as an actual musical instrument, but I think they're definitely get best geared towards children and for very young people. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video of the adorably cute and tiny Shown Hut piano, and I hope you guys liked it. If you did, you might want to go check out my channel. I've done lots of really cool videos from professional level acoustic pianos to professional level digital pianos, as well as toy digital pianos too. So if any of that sounds cool, you might want to go check out my channel. And also don't forget, if you're interested, you can uh, join my Patreon and you can also go check out my second channel, Milan Recording Studios, where I post performances and behind the scenes videos of the studio. If any of that sounds cool, you might want to go think about doing those things. And if you do all that, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.